Stumpers, what is going on? I'm recording with the guy that does refuses to get on camera and another guy who just has his lotions and a chair <laughs> and it's foot stuff. This is how I feel every episode. I record by myself. I just talk to myself. Perry, how you doing? Yeah, I am good. I am really fucking good. <sighs> that fuck was Barcelona and fuck Rick. I had a really good rap today. I had a really good rap. I, I was calling out all EPL teams. We're recording this today, February 23rd at 5.10. Ricardo, I know your team doesn't play in Europa. Your team plays in Champions League. But anyway, how are you doing today, Rick? I'm feeling like a champion, not a European. Uh, I'm not yeah. a Europa fan. I'm a Champions League fan. I was gonna that, say, was, that was awful, man. I was going to say, was... you're the most European dude on the fucking pod. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The the pressure has gotten to Ricardo and Tiago to the yeah. point that they like decide who, like next week, I guarantee you, Ricardo won't be on, but Tiago will. They can't yeah. handle the fire. They can't. Uh, it's just it's it's just hard. It, I like United. Like I, I was I was watching a little bit of the game today and yeah. I like the way they play, but I can't like him because of this fucking guy that's on the pod yeah. with me. I like answer, I can't answer. I can't agree with him, you mm-hmm. know. Ah, that, that's hilarious. All, all of us will agree on one thing. If you put us in a fucking box, this version of Man U, which we'll talk about, they did beat Barcelona today, is enjoyable to watch. And Ten Hag, as feminine as he acts, even his handshake at the end with Xavi was super weird. Like, he doesn't feel like a man's man. He's an incredible manager. And it's hard don't not to that. feel that way, right? It's hard It's hard don't not to do be that. Like, no, no, I'm being honest. I can, no, I'm I'll, sorry, Jesus, don't do that. No, Ten Hag is a man's man. That's my and fucking manager, yo. He 100 percent. He 100 percent drinks mimosas while you're drinking beer. He's that guy. It's okay though. <laughs> cares. I will say though, is they are doing something fantastic there, and it looks fantastic. And they are, in my opinion, the heavy favorites to win Europa now. That is just a fact. I think they're the best English team remaining. It's not a hot take. It's a reality. Um, yeah. So quickly, we will jump to. Sporting survived. Uh, Ricardo slept through most of it. I know, actually, he didn't sleep through it. He lost his phone in the snow today. Uh, Sporting won <laughs> 4 0. They bet Midgetland. Is that what you call them, Perry? Midgetland? Yeah, Midgetland. Midgetland. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say too much like the word midget, but yeah, it's it. How else can you pronounce it? Mid, yeah, it's probably Midgetland or whatever. So anyway, they advanced 4 0. Uh, in really big stump pod news, Juventus progressed, which is fantastic. Di Maria with. A hat trick and spoiler alert for those that are listening, I will be clipping the Di Maria goal as our sort of like our weekly post. The first was it the first goal, Perry? Yeah. Yeah, it was the first goal. Oh my god. Did you see it, Rick? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, that's whip. That's Mr. <laughs> Whippy right there. That shit was so, nasty. It's so annoying how good every Argentinian player is playing other than Martinez and Nat. Is it Martinez and Nat? <laughs> Everybody, Wait, everybody oh, that. Emmy Martinez, Emmy yeah. Martinez, yeah, 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 yeah. Shit. Um, but anyway, they are they are all playing fantastic, and it feels like a World Cup tax. That's a real thing. Uh, so Juventus advanced, Roma advanced, which is big news for us as well. And we, we don't talk Conference League here unless Everton makes it. Uh, Man U two, Barcelona one. Uh, I will shoot to Perry, who I know watched this wire to wire. I was at work for most of it and watched the end. Uh, I have not seen the Bruno. You didn't tag me anything, Perry, so you're a bitch. No. no. I, I didn't see the Bruno foul, so was that a foul on the... That that was the softest shit I've ever seen in my life. In terms of a penalty, like, you know, that sort of contact happens in the box often, like every single game, at least three, four, five times a game. Um, I kind of felt like the referee was just looking for something in the very beginning to to kind of give a call like that because... Let's be honest. Uh, from the minute, from minute one, Barca, they weren't in the game. They weren't in the game. Like, we were just crushing these guys. Uh, Bruno had a chance to get us up one nothing, but he early, shot it directly right? at the goal. Early, early. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he yeah. was, it, it was basically one against one. You know what I mean? It was 1v1, and he shot it directly at the goalkeeper, and I was like, oh, come on, bro. Like, you got to at least make the guy actually work, right? And then I think about five minutes later, that's when we ended up seeing the penalty, which was just really cheap. Uh, they scored, and then we felt a little bit deflated, right? Because, uh, you know, it's one of those cheap penalties where you're like, I can't believe this has actually happened. So I, I, as an athlete, you're probably going to get deflated. Uh, Barca started going a little bit of a run, but really weren't doing nothing. There was just, it was just possession. Weren't really doing a damn thing with the ball. 
Um, but then second half came, he switched it up, brought on Anthony for a big horse. Uh, moved he's Bruno stinks, eventually. Eh? Big horse? Yeah, I'm out on him. I mean, I mean, overall, like, it, it's crazy because there's certain games that he's good for, right? And there are other games where it's like, he's utterly useless. He's utterly useless. In the first half, that was today. He was very useless. He he wasn't getting to the ball. He wasn't doing anything. Uh, so it was a great move by bringing on Anthony, playing him out wide. We got a little bit more balance. The moment that happened, everything just changed in the game. And the second half was just ours. Like Barcelona did absolutely nothing in the second half. We just took it to them, slapped them up as usual, as I predicted. You know, so what am I united? One of my favorite goals, before I ask Rick what he thought, one of my favorite goals that is I was watching on Flash Score, walking home, walked the dog, came back in on the phone, and it was already 1 1. And I'm like, so who scored for Manu? Obviously, you know, I'm hoping it's Bruno. I'm like, no, yeah. it was the second best person it could have been. The worst Manu player scored, assisted by Bruno, which is Fred. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to look in the group chat, but there's 46 unread messages, and I don't want to ruin it and go that way. I, I need to actually sit down and read it. Um, yeah. But, but Fred I, played I, well today. Fred well, played yeah. well. Even in the first half, he played well. The worst player for me, um, it was Val Vegors and Bruno. They were the two worst players. They were 100% the two worst players. And I'm just being honest with you. Like, sure. you can think that I'm hating. I'm not oh. hating. This is this was actually him. Bruno, stunk it up. But, like, you know, it, it, it's a team game. It's a team game. So the rest of the team picked them up and we ended up winning. So that's all I care for. So Ricardo, what did you feel about it? Um, from what you watched, I don't know if you watched wire to wire. When did you tune in? I, I watched bits and pieces. Uh, the penalty, I feel like it was a penalty. I feel like Perry's being biased there. Okay. Uh, Just like but, you uh, with that answer. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, it, it, was, exactly. it was brutal. It was it's brutal. not a penalty. So anything, I think it was a penalty. Okay, well, but like, listen, but like, I'm but gonna like, decide. But like Perry, but like Perry said, uh, United did look better than Barca the whole game, basically, from the bits that I watched. Fred looked amazing, I felt, even like defensively, not just the goal. Um, and Anthony did change the game when he came in at half, which was pretty good. Um, yeah, there was some beef between Xavi and Bruno before the game. I think uh, Perry probably knows about that better, but no, nah, he just he just called him the Portuguese guy, like, he knows his name. He did. He just didn't, yeah. you know. He didn't. He didn't say his name. He just said, "Oh," because he was naming off a bunch of players, saying Sancho, Rashford, and that yeah. Portuguese guy. And I was yeah. like, "Okay, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's usually it's usually a thing between like uh, Catalan people, like people from Barcelona, that they they don't like Portuguese people. I guess Figo and Ronaldo kind of did that to them. No, I don't add Cristiano to no conversation. I have. But yeah, I have. Uh... This, yeah? Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. So I'm I'm looking at it now. So how do I say this? Not it's not a football pod. I get that, or an NFL football pod. There was a huge call in the Super Bowl, a massive call that was a oh, penalty. Yeah. It was a penalty, but it's a really bad time to call that penalty. So I think yeah. this, this is in that zone, right? Bruno clearly a foul, but to call that in a second leg of a tied tie to open up a match in the first 20 feels soft. So it's a soft penalty. Yes, it is a penalty. I think by the letter of the law, if you went to VAR, it is a foul. You sort of hope it's not called at this juncture of it. Is that a fair? Is that a go, But the thing is that it didn't go to VAR. It didn't I, go to VAR at all, which was kind of wild. Um, and yes, it great. was a soft penalty. But like, if you grab somebody, like, if you grab somebody in the box, obviously, you know, um, if they call a penalty on you, like, at time, a lot of the times you deserve you deserve it because you, you're not supposed to grab a player. Don't fucking grab a player. But as you said, this is the second leg. Massive game. Such a soft penalty to call. Like, don't call that. You you don't call that. But you Either also way. don't do that as a player, you yeah. know? I, I know exactly what you mean because you don't do that as a player. You don't want to put that in the ref's hands. Um, yeah. I think if we were to really be honest and unbiased, which is impossible with black screen at the bottom there, I think if we were to be honest, Man U was the better team over two legs, Rick. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't really I didn't really watch the first one. The first one seemed like it was a back and forth. No, game. Man U Man U felt Man U felt like they were the better team in, in the first but, one. But from Should've watching this game, I, like like you said, I think United is probably favorite to win this this competition after minute. this game, at least. 
yeah it's it's uh it's definitely in their books it's there um to put it who, who, who are you cheering for me yeah are you fucking kidding me you, why would you ask me that you know i'm a juventus fan i would ask me that i, I think it'd be pretty cool if roma won just looking at Roma. Hey, I will be honest. Hell no. Yeah. Huh? There you go. Real huh? trophy. Yep. In, yeah. in like that. Ain't, ain't nobody want to see that dinosaur win another one, man. Let's 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 <laughs> put him on a shelf. Because you know he won he won the conference league last year. If he wins yeah. this one, the next next year he'll go to Perry's I don't sick. Know, Perry, I, I do believe there is a part of you that the podcast is gonna be the greatest medicine for you, Perry. Because one day I'm gonna have someone that I can put on staff to cut and clip your stuff. There was an episode you were so excited when he won Conference League last year. You were so excited. Yeah. Like, another trophy. No, but, it, but that's last season. That's wait, last season. This wait. is going up against us this year. Would I that's want right. someone to beat us? Of course not. No. That doesn't make exactly. sense. Why would I want someone to beat us? Wait. So, so it has you. to do with the dinosaur. You love the dinosaur. You were, like, petting the dinosaur last year. It has to do with Yeah, you. he's still a dinosaur, though. Rude. Um, I do believe... <laughs> see? But, Rick, if, I'm gonna, if I can pose the question to you, which team do you not want to see win it? And for me, it's Arsenal. <laughs> no, for me, it's Arsenal. Uh, yeah. I would, I would say probably one of any other British teams. My second team will probably be Sporting. That I would want to win. Nah. It would be Roma, Roma and Sporting. Juventus. Ro- I don't want to hear that. Juventus, Roma, <laughs> Menu. That, those but are- didn't, didn't Sporting just lose 4 nothing? So how can they win? They won. They won. They took they won, they won 4 nothing or they lost 4 nothing. They beat Midgetland 4 0. No way. Yeah, the, the is shit. I, I didn't expect that. Midgeland got a red so, early. Oh damn. So, Second yellow. Do they do they know who plays each each other now? Like tomorrow. The draw. Oh tomorrow. The draw. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow's I, a draw. I thought maybe like Arsenal was already like the winner of this team. Like if, nah. I thought they would face the winner of this team type of thing. No, nah, tomorrow's the draw. Fuck man. I, I'll be honest. Arsenal menu final sounds yeah. fucking delightful. That sounds incredible. Cause that Rick right there, that's a double loss for Perry or a double win. It's like it's it's huge. It hurts that much more if it's against Arsenal. Oh, we deserve that. We deserve so, that. You, we're still beating them. I don't give a fuck. This I, guess, I guess United can't face Arsenal next round, right? No. So Real Sociedad or Real Betis would be one it of the options. Be, it won't be Real Sociedad because they came out of that group. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it okay. could be real Betis or whatever, like another Spanish team. I hate playing Spanish teams, man. Honestly. Freiburg? Chiquitaki type stuff? No, it's just, I don't know what happens. It's the weirdest thing, man. Like, the refs always get involved some way, somehow. Like, anytime we play a Spanish team, the most fucking weirdest call is always made at some point. Like, I remember in 2013, I think it was 2013, 2014, going up against Real Madrid. And we had them at um, at uh, Old Trafford, and they called a red on Nanny, which was like the weakest red anyone's ever fucking seen. And uh, you know, we lost that game afterwards because obviously you're down to ten men now, right? Against Real Madrid, but that you know, I, it always happens against Spanish teams. It's so weird. Because because I record this, I, I, I believe I, I believe I deserve the final word here, but I was thinking, so I, I was getting changed whenever I got home, and it was 1-1. And I'm like, in what world can Manchester United lose here and someone is not to blame? I thought about this, Rick. I'm like, so if it's a defensive error, we know it cannot be Lissandro Martinez, it cannot be Varane. There was no world that Barcelona was going to escape Old Trafford without Man U fans being furious at somebody. And is it just Man U fans? I don't know. I think I'm just very biased to like, I think they are the most psycho fan base in soccer. I'm going to put that on the table. I My Twitter is pelted with them, but they're also the most fun f- fan base. It's like the Leafs, except they win. It's the best thing ever. Um, that is not yeah. even a subliminal shot at you, Perry, at all. No, I bad. listen, Barcelona could not have beaten us anyways, as I've said from oh, the very beginning. But if they, they could did. Not, yo, without help, they can't beat us. Barca are not that good. I've been saying this. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Like, they're not that good. They weren't better than us. Both legs, they looked fuck. They looked like they actually played a real team all season long, like the first time. Like, and, and they didn't know how to handle it. Like, nah, man, get out of here with that part of shit. For longtime listeners, I know crazy. Our first 10 to 15 minutes was dedicated to a Europa 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we love Perry and we love getting him out. So that's why we're there. We'll jump into the EPL and then we'll do some Champions League and then we'll do our predictions. See how we can make it today. He has a fun segment we're going to do next week. Uh, I don't even know what we want to name it, but we'll name it something and Ricardo won't be here, but we'll see. Uh, okay, let's start with first place Arsenal. So go ahead, Rick. Cut. Go. Didn't you didn't you make money on Union Berlin beating Ajax? Right? I yeah. did. You did. Oh shit! You but did? you know what? Yeah, on a ticket, on a promo ticket. But I will nice. say, I will say, as much as that is a play against Ajax, who stinks, I've been following the German league. Union Berlin is half decent, and that's why we have them in our predictions portion this week. And I said title race. I've been following yeah. Union Berlin and Dortmund and Leipzig and uh, Bayern, who struggled. And I'm going to be honest, guys, it's not in the bag for Bayern Munich, especially if they are committed to Champions League. That is a fact. And not because they lost over the weekend with a red card. I just feel the German League is either caught up or Bayern Munich is playing down. I said that a couple weeks ago, too, didn't I, Perry? Yeah, yeah, you did. No, I, I, I do remember that. I, I, For me, I don't know, man. I feel like this is like a one-off season. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like it's a one-off season. Next year, they're going to fucking win the league by 20 points again. Who are we kidding? If if Mane's playing, they're fucking totally in play. Uh, very nice that Ajax is... That, that prediction today, Rick, was based on mm-hmm. the first leg. I had Ajax at home, and they drew nil-nil, and Union Berlin were all over them. All over. Oh, yeah. I was like, coming back home to Germany, why wouldn't they take care of business? Apparently, it was pretty sound, right? 3-1? Yes. Perry, yeah. you didn't know this. I needed the over in Man U. I needed, I, I needed that Anthony goal. Like That's why I'm like, fuck, that Bruno play is so big. Please don't be a foul. I'm like, fuck, please. Um, yeah, it was a nice ticket. So, nice. into... Can you guys hear me? Yeah, of yep. course. Weird. It's just this microphone thing came up on my screen. Uh, Arsenal 4, Aston Villa 2. Anybody that tuned into this match, I was very much watching it closely. Aston Villa was the better team for large portions of this match. Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And I'm going to say this, and I don't mean to sound like a talking head before I shoot it to you guys. It did feel like Zinchenko scoring that goal, his first goal, I think, as as a gunner, maybe in the yeah. his, his entire EPL career, it EPL felt like career. a championship moment. I fucking yeah. hate Arsenal so much, but it felt like one of those like holy fuck! And then of course Martinez, who we just spoke about, an own goal against him, not really his fault, off the bar against him, and then Martinelli scoring an empty net goal and celebrating as if he scored the World Cup winning goal. Like fucking dork. Very that's a scrub, man. He's yeah. a fucking scrub. If Tiago's here, he'd be like, oh, he's the greatest young player yeah, ever. The guy is shit. Yo, he just runs in a straight line. He doesn't do anything with the ball. Like, get him out of here. Do you, you guys agree with this felt like one of those, like, championship medal moments combined with what Man, Man City did later on the, the day? Mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm still not giving them anything know, right now, bro. I'm still not giving them anything right now. Only reason is, like, you know, we we haven't even hit March yet. The we we all know like in, in the EPL, whenever it is, it is a tight race, usually it starts in April, right? April is when sure. we kind of want to know. Um, Who's let, who? Let's let's see let's see how it goes for Arsenal in the next like five games. I think the next five games for a lot of teams, especially in the top three, City, uh, Arsenal, and United, those next five games are going to be big for each club. It, just to see who's actually going to possibly run away with this thing. So let's see after the next five games, and then uh, I'll let you know if that Zinchenko goal was, like, that moment, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, Ricardo? Uh, there were some really nice goals in this game. Uh, I think Oli, Oli Wack, Watkins, uh, Saka's goal, and Zinchenko's goal were all really nice. Oh, and even Jor- – I'll, I'll give that goal to Jorginho. I don't understand why – like it's one thing I hate about soccer. Because it doesn't go in without it know, hitting goalie. It should, it should be the same thing as hockey. The guy shot it, hit the post. He's the last one to touch it. It should go in type of thing. should be his goal. Like, he did everything in that play to get that goal. He just hit the post and, you know, went up the guy's head. On goal. Oh, yeah. Ricardo, you were sort of, uh, I guess, Ricardo works off shit stumpers, so he's not always awake when we're chatting about it. Quickly, Marcus Rashford. 
Saka. Was it Vinicius? Who was the third guy, Perry? Vinicius Jr.? I think it was Vinicius. Who, do you, who yeah. do you take? Who do you take right this second? Easiest answer of life. Who do you take career thus far? And then who do you take for the rest of their career, Rick? Oh. Um, okay, so fuck this hard. Marcus Rashford is the most informed player in the universe right now. I think Vinicius scoring a hat trick the other day. Okay. He didn't lose two. Close to that. It was two goals. He didn't score a hat trick. Anyway, oh yeah, the purple patch is over for Marcus Rashford. Because yeah, because yeah, he I'll, didn't I'll score go, in one game. <laughs> go, watch him, I'll watch him score two goals on Sunday, bro. <laughs> well, right. Vinicius for all three. Lazy. That you know what? I feel like Thiago has entered your soul. He's entered your body. Yeah. Sick. It's gross. I just I feel like Vinicius has proven proven more already. He's already won the Champions I, League. So I went Vinicius thus and far. He, Vinicius thus far. I went Rashford, current. Like anybody other than Rashford right now is a silly answer. And I'm gonna yeah. go with Rashford for the entirety of the career, even if he moves on from Manu. Feel like he's found his niche and his confidence. And I don't really like Vinicius. And I think Perry had the same answer as me, or very close. No, I had the exact same answer. Yeah. Yeah. Just, which is fair. Um, okay. Moving on to – let's talk about good stuff first. Everton won, leads nothing. Just beautiful – a beautiful three points. That was awful to watch. Really hard on the eyes. This is what Perry sort of warned, warned me that was going to happen, is the Daesh era is not going to be pretty, but it's going to get you points from time to time. The very big three points. I didn't believe in Leeds coming into it. I'm very happy with it. I don't expect anybody to have watched this match. Am I fair in assuming that? <laughs> More than fair. Yeah. <laughs> there, was much, there was much better soccer on in the world, and I respect the hell out of anybody who attempted uh, Coleman A. <laughs> like, I did I did watch a little bit early on, you know, in hopes of seeing Everton fail. But at the same time, I hate Leeds so much, too. So I was very conflicted. So I turned it off because I, I I was so conflicted. I was like, fuck this shit, man. They are they have just escaped the drop zone for at least for now. We know it's gonna sort of bounce back and forth. And Leeds is now in the drop zone, which is fantastic, along with West Ham, which I think we would all agree. I, I want to get to the West Ham match in a bit, but they are the shock of where they're sitting right now. Speaking of shocks, Ricardo, Chelsea or City, which one do you want to talk about? Uh City. So, For Ricardo found a very reasons. cool, a very cool Pep fact. Pep does not like using subs. For pissing me off. Fucking, it's the weirdest shtick of life. And they drew one one. Bernardo has finally come back from Qatar and scored a goal, which is nice. Um, yeah, pretty devastating draw. That a match that they should have For, completely bagged. But Bernardo's been playing well. He's been actually starting at right. the left back at point at points. I don't think he's been playing well. Maybe maybe a second in four match. Yeah, well, Arsenal, Arsenal in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah, the whole thing pissed me off. Like Haaland missed. Like as soon as Haaland missed, he hit the post and won. Had the rebound and then hit shot it right at the goalie or, or whatever he did. As soon as that happened, I'm like, fuck, something's gonna happen. Like Nottingham Forest is gonna tie this fucking game. And, uh, and then I look at the at the at the stats and like Pep hasn't like made a single sub. Like, you know, like, I don't know, the bench that he has, like, use your players, I mean, even if it's to waste time. Bench isn't good enough, A. I think Perry's going to say that when I throw it to him. Bench isn't good enough, and I think Pep is too stubborn. Temuz, as the Portuguese would Fuck. say. What do you think, Perry? What's what's with the Pep thing? I know you're happy they oh. drew here, but. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> Listen, no one cares about City, right? That's why everyone is completely fine with them coming back and winning this league. Like, I, I, I don't like seeing results like these. Like, if United aren't winning it, I need City to fucking step up their game and win this. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to see Arsenal win this at all. And I don't know what Pep is doing. Like, sometimes with Pep, like, the dude overthinks it. it it's very, it's yeah. very weird. Like, He's all- you know, sometimes you can, you can tell, like, this guy's in his own head. Whenever um, like big matches come up, or even little ones against like a Nottingham Forest, like you miss. Okay, you guys miss in, in front of goal. Highland miss, but you're telling me uh, you guys couldn't really create any other like top opportunities after that. I, I'm not too sure as to what's going on over there, 
Um, I just think that if, if Pep just gets out of his own way, perhaps they'll end up like actually winning this thing. If not, hopefully, you know, like we can squeak in there and, and make a little bit of noise, but I don't think that's going to happen. That's why I need them to step up. Like I need Pep to get out of his own fucking way and stop overthinking like he does whenever there's a big game in the horizon. Like this guy, I, I have no idea what's going on, but he needs to fucking step it up. I'm not trying to see I, Arsenal win. I, I, understand, I understand you're saying he doesn't have a good bench, but he still had Mares on the bench, Al Alvarez. And then he has kids that if he doesn't play him at certain points, these kids are never going to gain form either, is what I'm trying to say. And like, and the first sub that he did was he took out De Bruyne, which De Bruyne was probably the best player on the field, and uh, to put Alvarez. And uh, and then he kept he kept Foden, right, which was trash the whole game. Foden, I don't know what the hell he's been doing. But then he eventually took out Foden and put Aki, so he was happy with the tie. Like he he realized he wasn't going to win the game, so he just put a defenseman instead. I don't know, just a lot of the things didn't make sense. You know the thing? Go, go, sorry. Oh, sorry, Jay. No, I was just going to say, you know the thing about Pep in that bench? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that he doesn't have a bench because, yo, he has a amount of, like, he has many players where in which they will start almost on every single uh, EPL team. Like, like he has good players. Foden will start on every single EPL team. Sure. Right? Sure. Alvarez could start on the majority of EPL teams that they have. Um, Gundogan sometimes is on the bench, off the bench, like, you know, like he, he's not always like a starter, but he will start on every other team's, um, uh, like Calvin, he has Calvin many good Phillips? players. Calvin Phillips will start on many yeah. teams, like, uh, starting, starting lineup as well. It's just, I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't trust his players. Like you guys were also saying too, like that could be a, that could be a thing right now because it just doesn't make sense to me. He has, he has a good enough team. Do not roast me, guys, if this is a take that is going around. But as of yesterday, I am convinced this is like a message to the board. This is a message from Pep to the board. I do not like the pieces coming off my bench. There was not enough retooling at the window. I don't know. I, I'm not. I just, it feels like that. And we'll get to the Leipzig result as well. But this is not, I, Rick warned me about this or mentioned this to me on Saturday. And then yesterday, I noticed it, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it feels very direct. It feels very, uh, like, there's there's a message there. And even after, like, I'm going to fast forward a bit. After they scored against Leipzig yesterday, he doesn't even stand up and celebrate. He sits down and he's arguing with, or, like, talking very firmly to his fucking assistant. And it's like, weird juju. Weird, weird. That, Yo, that probably means that something, something bad is gonna, about to happen with the whole thing, the investigation, oh, maybe. Yeah. He's the last guy to fucking complain about like not having uh, uh, players. He's the last guy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, his owners come and they 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 bought him. Like, I swear he's gone through like forty or fifty players like since he first came into city. Like every year he has a new uh, starting eleven. Like, no, nah, he's the last guy to complain. You know, just do your job and fucking coach. You guys want? You guys? Sorry, Rick. Go ahead. No, no, go. Um. Um. What was I going to say? Oh, but out of the three teams that he's been on, is uh, City's probably like the one with the, the least depth, if you think about it. No way, bro. There's no, no bro. way. No, not for me. Only reason why, like, yo, look at so many years when he when they were on top. It's because they yeah. essentially had two starting 11s, right? No, but they I'm saying, I'm saying right now. He's, he's saying to the 2022-23 campaign. For one season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for one season. You know what I mean? That's that's why I'm like, nah. This is just one season. This guy can't handle it right now. Like, one season, and and he's capitulating. Like, get out of here, bro. Woo! Capitulating, Rick. Next episode, you come on. You'll be Jamaica born, or uh, Jamaica bound. I want you to spell that word, capitulating. That's a <laughs> solid, solid Fabi word that you're gonna. Rick get. can't. Rick can't no. spell. I can't even use, use, fucking use it in a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> yeah, no. I just did. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so on to see everything might get relegated, guys, but at least we're not Chelsea. That's the thing. Like Chelsea is like that nerd in life with all the money in the world, but buys like a lemon of a car. They lose one nothing to Southampton, which in a roundabout fucking way hurt me as an Everton fan because Southampton is in the yeah. top. And we don't need Southampton getting any life, but they got fucking three points in at Stanford Bridge. Um, 
I think I'm on the Potter might get canned, Perry. I think that might have been one of the better calls. It's a good call. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yo, bro, because you know what? It It is Chelsea, right? And although they don't have the same, like, board, they don't have the same people who – are in um, upper management. They don't have the same owner. They still do the same things. And that that is overreacting and firing a manager after half a season or a whole season. They will just get rid of a guy just like that if they don't um, get to where they think that they're supposed to be, right? But it's kind of wild. Like, yo, you spend $600 million in two fucking transfer windows like this season, right? And then you bring a guy, like you bring a guy in, um, what is it like three months into the season, something like that, and then you expect them to perform miracles while you're also incorporating like all these other fucking players into into the team. Uh, one, I don't think is that fair on Potter, but two, at the same time, like there are things that Potter can do in games where he can help his team out, and I just think that he's not doing the basic things as a manager, in my opinion. And and right now you're just seeing all of it come together, and that's why they're so shit. Like I love it. I love watching it. I, I love I love like seeing them fucking fall apart like this. Like I love everything about it. But at the same time, I do like Potter as a manager. But I think that this position right now, currently for him, is too big of a position for him. I think it, it in my opinion, trap. he's it not ready for it. Pardon. It was a death trap position. There was no surviving yeah. this. It, it, yeah. felt, it felt toxic. It feels very directionless. And they lost to the most directionless team in the EPL. Like Southampton yeah. lost at the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fucking crazy. But they played so well, though. Southampton, they, they played hard. They played hard in that game. Like Chelsea, they had a couple of chances, but they weren't really given much. Like I thought, Southampton was was really good on that day, especially their midfield. Sure, it, it was it was really really good. So I mean, they deserve to win that. Ricardo, anything to say about your boy Enzo squad and my boy Juan Felix or Perry's boy too? Anything got to say? I, about the squad? I have. I didn't watch this game, uh, but yeah, like I my my opinion, I don't think he should get fired like this year. I don't know. I know we, he, like we, it's we don't terrible, so either. but like. Like he, he, I think he came out and said, it's not my fault. I don't know what he means by that, but remember, but like, Rick, remember, we're not saying he should. We said, will he? That's the question. Will he? I, I say, I say maybe if you fire him, fire him at the, at the end of the season. Let's see. Like, I don't know. Like nothing better is going to happen now. I disagree. I, I think, man, you sort of set up a good way with Ten Hag bringing him at the end of last season and you sort of see the philosophies being built yeah. as opposed to bringing a guy in at the end of the season and then the transfer window right there. The direction isn't necessarily there. That's the thing with bringing a guy in that early into a season. Like, man, you knew that where they were within the table last year, right? They, they sort of had an idea. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that this would help at all, but is Lukaku on loan? Is he yeah. being loaned out to Inter? So he's yeah. going to go back to Chelsea next year, and then eventually they get a striker. I don't know if it's going to help at all, but yeah. If I was Lukaku, I wouldn't go back to Chelsea like his better years are they're in Italy in my in my opinion like I I don't think he's a he's a Premier League player currently right now um, at this stage of his career like if he goes to Italy and stays in Italy I think he would do a whole lot better you know he's barely a Serie A guy he's like a fucking 40 45 minute I know he's coming off injury but he's just not that guy but he's good enough in those appearances, he's not gonna be able to do that in the EPL. I'm with you. He, he, he's gonna end up scoring. I, I feel like he's gonna end up scoring anywhere in between eight to ten goals from now to the end of the season. Sure. I, I really do think that. And I think the reason for that is one, he's coming back healthy and he looks like he's lost a whole like he's lost a lot of weight right now. That's like, like the, that's like telling he, me at my fattest, like, oh, you lost 10 pounds. It's like uh, you're still a little bit above, Jay. That's the thing. Lukaku still has got some extra meat, but Hey, I, I will say he scored a very important goal this week, so I'm not going to Yeah, lie. It's very important. Yeah. Fuck board, too. And plus, um, I would love to lose 10 pounds myself, man. Like, shit. Dude. <laughs> Same. Betting <laughs> season, baby. Um, <laughs> okay, we go we'll, – we'll quickly breeze through the last couple. Newcastle with the surprising results, losing 2 nothing. But the big thing here is Nick Pope is a bozo, and he's the goalkeeper for Newcastle. And I have a lot of love for my boy Perry because when 
him and I agree on a goalie or a player sucking, seeing the comments on certain threads and, oh, poor Nick Pope. He fucked up. He's going to be sitting the Carabao Cup final because he's a fucking idiot. That's he's a fucking happens. bozo. Yeah, it's a bozo move. Um, I do find it weird that it carries into the Cup final, but they all know this ahead of time, so that's life. There's no, like, surprise. Yeah. Um, Liverpool 2, Newcastle nothing. I got really nothing to say other than that is going to really impact the final. Would you agree, Perry? The, um, Pope the, the red Pope. card for yeah. Nick Pope, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that would impact the final uh, a little bit. But either way, even when he was going to play, I still believe that we're going to fucking slap them up. It's just that, you know, with Newcastle, they're not good offensively. What they are is that they're solid defensively. And it starts a lot from Nick Pope, right? Like, yeah, yeah it starts a lot from him. But they weren't – like, you got you, you got to be able to score obviously, right, to, to win games. Um, so even with Nick Pope there, he's not going to be there. It really doesn't matter. Like, we're we're going to beat them in the final, in, uh, in, in my opinion. But it does impact them. It does impact them a lot. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, Rick, anything before we, we move forward? Uh, no, Newcastle, not, Liverpool? Not, re- not really, no. You're not? Oh, not oh, Dar- 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 yeah. Dar- oh, Darwin scored a nice goal. Was no. that was Champions League? That was, that was Champions, Champions League. League. Yeah, Darwin doesn't yeah. score it in the EPL. I think he scored that game too, though. Probably, probably it, like it was him and him and Gabko. Oh, yeah, he did. He did. Sure. Yeah. You know what's crazy is Trent is one of the worst players that people thought were good, and it, it was right? oh, it's crazy. He gets oh. abused. He gets abused consistently. I just saw he got an assist on that goal that Nunez doesn't normally score in the EPL. Sorry, Stumpers. I don't know everything. I just know he sucks. Um, Man U three, called, uh, Leicester zero the, on Sunday. Nothing really to say other than the purple patch continued here, and <laughs> I will say, uh, very impressed that they were able to put that team away, and I thought that would lead to good things, which happened today. Uh, Champions League, we ready, boys? Champions League. Yep. Napoli two, Frankfurt nothing. Napoli are a bit of a wagon. Napoli, I, I understand it's not a very good German side, but they're solid enough. And Napoli looked fully in control. Uh, fun fact, though, Perry, did you know Napoli have had three penalties in Champions League this year and they've missed all three? Holy crap, no, I didn't know. <laughs> I think, and I I think know. Ricardo, I know you were watching the match along with me. It's been three different takers. <laughs> it's been three, I don't know. Yeah, it's been three different ones. Osterman missed one. Uh, the guy from Jordan we really like that I'm never gonna repro- I'm never gonna pronounce his name KK. Uh, Jordan, yeah, uh, yeah, Georgia. Just leave it at that. <laughs> Georgia, sorry. W- w- how do you pronounce that, Rick? I'm gonna guess Kavarac Kelia. Better than I would have done. Uh, <laughs> he missed he missed his penalty in Oshman. This was amazing. I put two bucks on like first goals on this day. Everything was coming up Jay. Everything it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> Napoli two. Frankfurt nothing didn't feel like that devastating of a loss for Frankfurt, but I don't know how they come back from it. Did you guys watch this, Rick? What did you think? Uh, I didn't watch this one, no. But one one good thing, one fun thing that I watched, I heard about Napoli is uh, their stadium is uh, is like surrounded by condos. So whenever like they play in the Champions League, everybody in those condos, they yell out, the champions, so the whole city, like it vibrates. Like whenever they sing the champions anthem, so cool. just because of that, Napoli is probably my second favorite. Like that, I would want to win Champions League or to go oh, as far behind, as <laughs> behind Liverpool, right? I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know for a fact, I know Perry quite well. He did not watch a minute of the Napoli game, not one single minute. Pretty sure no. his eyes were locked in on Liverpool Real, which I did not yeah, watch a ton of. I would be lying to you guys because I was watching the Napoli game. Uh, I did see Nunez's early goal. I saw Katois, what I thought was the biggest goalie mistake of the match. Allison <laughs> pulled my beer like 20 minutes later, pulled my beer. Um, and then Vinicius Jr., thank God Thiago's not on the pod today. One beautiful goal, one that hit his chin pad and went in. And then second half, guys, I got no breakdown other than it felt like my phone was just blowing up with Real, Real, Real. So Perry, give it to me, what happened here, and then Rick can go next because I did not watch what happened in the second half specifically? 
Oh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess the second half, because we already went through the 2-2 out of nowhere in the first half. That shit was nuts. I mean, yeah, that 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 was that was something else. Uh, but once the second half happened, I mean, that was all Real Madrid. Easy, easy, such an easy uh, half of football for them. Like, they just came out and just started playing their game, right? Uh, Luka Modric was just running the show at 37 running through the midfield of guys who are even like 18 years old or whatever, like with the young legs, it's just running right past them, setting up chances. Like it was, it was unbelievable. I fucking loved every minute of the second half, loved every minute of it. Is this just like everything Thiago has been saying this year is just their midfield is so poor Liverpool. That is, is that what it is? is that what yeah. Is? yeah their, their midfield is horrible. Their, their midfield is absolutely terrible, but like, that's yeah. something that, um, I don't know if you look at like if you listen to Liverpool fans, they'll tell you that's the thing that they've been looking for during the off season that just happened, right? Was to fix their midfield, and they didn't really do anything. Uh, they they looked at getting forwards instead, right? Um, they, yeah, yeah, they went and they got Darwin Nunes in, for a hundred mil instead of saying, hey, maybe I can get three players for that amount to play in the midfield perhaps right like um so they deserve everything that they're getting right like now Gakpo, i fucking right? love it okay. Gakpo came in january Gakpo came in january which was also something else that they didn't need if you ask me even though yes jota was hurt um what's the other guy that diaz was diaz is hurt Firmino, Firmino, right but their midfield their midfield has always been something where in which when they were dominating it was the prime thing. Like it was the big thing. It, it was what was helping them through games. Whenever they had uh Henderson and what's his name? Van Alden or whatever. And um, yeah. And, and, and other guys, uh, Milner w- would play in there every once in a while. Um, other, other players that were just like, you know, who, box, you know who, box high energy guys, you know, who to Perry. And it's not that he's left is Fabino has really aged. Poorly. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I keep hearing jokes that he's actually Nigerian, yeah. he's and he's like thirty-five yeah. years old. I've heard the same thing. <laughs> I've heard the same thing that he's really, really much older. Um, yeah, because <laughs> he's Nigerian. You know, faking, faking birth certificates and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What did you take away from this, Rick? Yeah, the I think Liverpool has more than just a midfield problem. I think defense and I think everything is pretty bad for them to give up that lead. Um, but yeah, like uh, Vinicius looked amazing. It looked unstoppable. Fabinho, I felt like there's going to be like a, a card on a lot of these guys, but it never happened. But yeah, like yeah, Liverpool just stunk the bed in the th- second half. You know, first Rick, half it looked pretty good. Rick, but you know what it is too is like it's not in the manner of blowing a lead. It's blowing a lead. Like you're up to nothing at the 15 minute mark, and to blow the lead before halftime. That is yeah. all the confidence. The momentum. For Real, right? Yeah. Oh, oh and the, the other thing, too, Modric just looked amazing, like like Perry was saying. He's like the true um, the true footballer. He, like, that proves to you that the, the ball is what's – the ball is supposed to move, not you. But Basically. Like that. Yeah. Oh, I get what I, he's saying, though. No, no, I get what he's saying. Don't I'm don't be hating, sense. Jason. Don't – yeah. Yo, don't be hating on the man, but I get I get what he's saying. Like usually, you know what? I, I'm with yeah. you on hating on Musso here, but like I get what he's saying. For sure, for sure. Yeah. The ball, yeah. I know the the ball should be the one doing the movement. I've heard that. I yeah, just want to yeah. Sure, because yeah. Rick said it's so poetically. Um, <laughs> Ricardo, do you think there is any way back for Liverpool in the second leg? I'm not. We're not doing Champions League predictions. I'm just curious. No, no chance. No. No, I agree. There's zero chance. No chance. I didn't They're that. fucking dead, and I love it. <laughs> like Real, Real could play their bench. No, they won't do that. They're not going to take it that easy on them. They're yeah. that's so, kind of that. That's too disrespectful. Like if, <laughs> if you well, end in, if you end up losing two, you deserve that. Like Alaba yeah. got hurt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did get hurt, so it looks like he might be out in the next game. David Alaba. Alaba. Uh, I actually just did God's work. You guys watched the good matches. I watched the other matches. So I watched pretty much <laughs> all of Inter and Porto, pretty much the entire thing, and. It was as good as you could imagine a Porto game being. I don't know how people watch the Portuguese league by choice. It's disgusting and nasty. <laughs> One big thing, Rick, and I'm going to say it, I do believe it was an unfortunate yellow, but 
we're going to look at it. So at about the 40 minute mark, Inter thought they drew a penalty. They got possession back into their end of the field and they kicked the ball out of bounds. VAR reviewed it. There wasn't a penalty for Inter Milan. So usually fair play is Porto would be giving the ball back to Inter. We could move on, right? Porto tried to speed the game up, throw the ball in quick. And ref blew the whistle, and DeMarco and Otavio get in each other's face. And they both get yellows, which feels like a very nothing thing, right? Otavio's like your size. DeMarco's like a nobody. These are no like nothing pieces. Fast forward to the 78th minute. Otavio takes, it was a careless foul, and it's a yellow. But it just sucks that that's the yellow that yeah. sent them down to 10 men. Uh, they concede shortly thereafter. Inter definitely took control of the match. The commentator, I thought, said it really well. This match felt like it was very much up for grabs, and that just sort of moved the needle. Porto almost survived it. Lukaku hits a post that just bounces right back to him. Uh, it's going to really annoy me to see uh, Diego. How do I pronounce it? Diego Costa? It sounds, it sounds a little bit different than normal Costa. Anyway, he's incredible. He made two or three huge saves in this match. He'll be a United player before we know it. No, 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 I don't want him. No, I want, um, you know, AC Milan's uh, uh, natural number one, uh, Mike, Mike Magno. Yeah, that Mike cool. Magno. No, that, that guy is dope, man. As a goalkeeper, like his, his ball playing ability is really good, but his shot stopping is very good, too. That's who I'm hoping that we can get. I'm not just saying this because I think you guys would know my most hated team in soccer is Porto. He made two or three, like, Reflection, incredible saves. I'm not doubting you have a guy you prefer. I just think he's incredible. He's really he's, good. Probably the only. No, he's player. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's shit. I'm not saying he's shit. I, I just want a different. I just want another goalkeeper. But if we got him, I'm not gonna say, oh, yeah, why did we get him? You know what I mean? True. Um, that's all I have for Inter Porto. I do believe that Porto ends up surviving this. The way they look there, it feels like Inter is gonna try to park the bus a bit, like two, and I don't think that plays well for them. And, and it's in Portugal, game. right? It's going to second, be in Portugal game. the second game. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see Porto um, with a comeback, like two nothing win. They're fucking scrappy, man, and they're such an annoying club. Like they they got into a few things with Atletico back to back matches this year, uh, in group stage. And I was like, oh, you know, Atletico's chippy. Porto's fucking chippy. That they got the red because the stupidity that they play with. I, I really dislike them. I dislike their style. Um, <laughs> yeah. On to the match you guys watched closer. I'll throw it to Rick first. Leipzig won, City won. You didn't watch it? Sorry, Rick. Perry. No, I didn't watch it. Perry did. Perry did. Perry. Yeah. Uh, you said you could see Leipzig going on the road and winning this. That City yeah. does not look good for nope. March. Nope, not at all. I didn't think City even deserved more than a tie um, in, in this game. Uh, everything that they're doing, it just seemed like it wasn't coming off. And like, you know, we talk a lot about Hallen and his yeah. impact and, and what it's like with this team with Hallen and this team without Hallen. And this was another game where you're sitting you're sitting there thinking to yourself, like, did they even really need this guy? Right? But it's weird because he has almost 30, 30 goals. <laughs> like, why wouldn't they want a goal scorer like this? But at the same time, we see how they play. You know right? Who's missing, and, right, Perry? Who is missing from this match? Yeah, but... Even with, but without him, they should be still beating Leipzig, in my opinion. Agree. Agree. Even without him, they should still be beating Leipzig because you have a Foden, you have a Bernardo Silva, you have a Grealish. These are very creative players who can, and Mar, uh, and Mares. These are creative players that can fill that void of De Bruyne going up against a Leipzig, right? So this is why I'm saying, like, they have those players, but they still couldn't do it. They still couldn't do it. And 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 I think Leipzig might give them something back at City. Listen, I am not making City excuses, but I will say to those that do not watch any German league, I'm a German fanatic lately, guys. Leipzig is pretty fucking good. They should not be on the same field as City. City spends abundantly more money, and they are, you know, much more not historic. The last couple of years they've been significantly better with this core of players. But Leipzig is no joke. I just cannot see a world in where City doesn't get the benefit of the doubt calls wise in a tight match in England. If it isn't, if it is even a tight match, you know what I mean, Perry? Yeah, no, I, I get exactly what you mean. Uh, but you know, I 
really I, I look at Leipzig and it's funny with Leipzig I think that they are a hard matchup for City because they are the English like they're the German version of an English team in my opinion right with their high intensity and how they play with their pressing and how they can just go on throughout a whole game playing that high intensity like an EPL team right that's so I think usually whenever you come into Europe you're playing against teams I want to slow the game down right and you know that's exactly the sort of game that you're going to go into and perhaps with City uh maybe they were kind of expecting that weren't really feeling like Leipzig coming at them like with such high intensity and they felt it throughout that game maybe something may change in a second or or not or or perhaps Leipzig will still continue like playing as hard as they do and and they will get something out of it I'm hoping they get something out of it it's it's a nightmare five days for City and when I say that I'm not like feeling sorry for them. This is what happens when you spend all that money and you're a really good club. This is, you know, the price you pay. But to draw Nottingham and to draw Leipzig within fucking five days and both matches you were up and both matches you concede fairly late, the sub thing, you can't, you can't be feeling good if you're City. And it, it does feel like they are not what I thought they were. And that's, that, I'm going to have to live with that take. I think I'm not the only one on this pod, but. Um, are you boys ready for some predicting? We're going to do some standings first. We'll start with the lowest. Ricardo, you have one prediction right in seven weeks. We need that Ooh. to improve. Sad. I actually, I'm starting to feel bad. I'm going to start giving you my points. Uh, Tiago Thanks. has three. He hasn't got one right in the month of February. It's sad. And Perry and I are just on fire. Perry's got six. I got five. Ooh. I think if we combine Tiago and Rick's score, that he wouldn't be with us. This is rough, man. No. He's getting fucked. This is, I, <laughs> I'm getting annoying, Rick. But listen, I don't know what to do. I, this is crazy. Um, uh, Spad, Spad Rene is going to penalties right now. Uh, don't tell me who they're playing. Don't tell me who they're playing. Fuck. Uh, ah, who are they playing? I don't even know. <laughs> Oh, okay. I know. I, I just I know the defenseman scored in the zone. That last Shocked they win. Yeah, Shocked Shocked Say Renee's wins. Why not? Uh, they win in penalties one nil, which is nuts. Oh uh, yeah. Does that mean only one guy scored in penalties? No. Why not? That's no. Insane. Yeah, they end up winning. Okay, so we predict. Uh, not a huge slate. We have five deep. We had, we do have a championship though, which is crazy because Manchester United's in it. They haven't played for one of those in a while. Uh, let's start with my squad. Aston Villa at Everton. We'll go Ricardo Perry, and then I'll do Tiago and I. Ricardo, Aston Villa, Everton. I went one nothing Aston Villa. This is why you don't right. get points, Rick. <laughs> why? I'm telling you, Perry. Aston, Aston Villa hasn't won in three games. That's kind of like my logic. No, you just hate Everton. You knew I was going to make fun of your score. That's, what, that's all that shit is. I know you are, <laughs> Perry. Uh, two to one Everton. Same for me. I got two on Everton. And Tiago's got two on Aston Villa. Tiago is really not good at this. I got to work on it with him. Uh, we go <laughs> Arsenal at Leicester. Uh, t- before we go, Perry, Leicester is better than their results. Would you agree? Or am I just crazy? Uh, I, I don't feel like they're as poor as it seems. Uh, They should be better than their results. I guess you can say that, right? Because um, just prior to the United game, they had won three games in a row, right? Um, and then they went up against a real team and got slapped. So I don't know. It's kind of tough because if they're going up against Arsenal, you know, they may get cooked. But at the same time, I'm hoping for a 2-2 draw here. Or really a Leicester win, but I'm going with the same 2-2 draw here. Ricardo? I have uh, Arsenal 2-1. I feel like they get points somehow. Like the last game, they were down 2 nothing. ended up winning 4-2. I feel Tiago, like Leicester will play a good game, but it will be 2-1. Tiago picked 2-1 as well. So I'm going to guarantee that that game ends 2-1 Arsenal. You and Tiago will get – that is your only point of the week. <laughs> that match. I have a 1-1 draw. Um, I will say, who is Arsenal missing up front, Perry? They're missing somebody. That's why Inkete is playing, right? Not Gabriel Jesus. Jesus. Is it only him? Yeah, up front, he's the only one that they're missing. 
Okay, fair enough. I thought they're missing. And then they're missing Thomas. And then they're missing Thomas Partey yeah, in yeah, the midfield. That, in the mid, that's right. Who the who midfield, Arsenal yeah. fans really do believe makes a difference. I don't know. That's their belief. Yeah. No, he does. He does make a difference, but like they're shit. Uh we go to <laughs> the this is the disappointment cup. Uh Chelsea at Tottenham. Ricardo. I have zero zero. That's the disappointment. That's the them. greatest score for <laughs> That's a good one. Perry. Both of them suck. <laughs> Two to one <laughs> Spurs. Two to one Spurs, man. I, I still I still see Chelsea just being super shit here. They they won't win for the rest of the season. Tiago, <laughs> Tiago stays on cue with his two one predictions. And he picks the same team he always picks, which is Chelsea. He picks against Everton, right. and he picks Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool anytime he can. The Thiago way. I have a one nothing Tottenham, but I'm going to be honest. I have zero. If you told me that match at the beginning of the year, I'd be like, oh, it should be a good one. I'm not going to watch a second of that match. Not a second. I, I think both clubs are awful. Uh, we'll skip the trophy for now. We'll go to Berlin at Bayern Munich, which is a title race one, which I insinuated earlier. Uh, both teams are tied with 43 points, and Leipzig is also tied with 43. So a big match in the Bundesliga for a title race. Very early title race, but it's pretty big. Uh, Ricardo? Uh, Bayern's at home, so I don't see them losing. 3-1, Bayern. 3-1. Uh, Perry? Disrespect. Yeah, I got a big old slap in here. Yo. 5 nothing Bayern Munich. It's going to be one of those. They're just going to bring Union back to reality here. Even though I love Union to, to win the league. Let's let's oh, be honest. Yeah. It'll be great. It'll be great. It would be good. It would be It'll good be for really soccer good. in Germany. Yeah, I I don't think it's gonna be that bad, but I think it's too close. I have three nothing Bayern, and Thiago's got three one. Now oh, we really? give it to a trophy: Newcastle versus Man United for the Carabao <laughs> Cup, eleven thirty Sunday. Skip Church, Ricardo. Are you gonna be watching in Jamaica? Yes or no? I'll try. Shut up! No, you're not. You're not watching. Watch. <laughs> Just honestly poke in the chat and I'll change the title to say make fun of Perry or ignore. And you'll know whether yeah. you talk or not. Uh yeah, it, it's it should be good. I'm I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna commit some time to watching Man United. I'm secretly hoping they lose, but we'll see. Uh yeah, don't we, be a fucking hater, bro. No, no, I, I was gonna pick Newcastle, but I'm not a hater. Uh Ricardo. <laughs> I said one one tie, but goes to penalties and Newcastle wins. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I have 2-1 Newcastle extra time because I don't know if you're aware, but I only have like that block. So I just put ET. Sorry. Uh, good prediction. Can I have a goal score in the game, Ricardo? For a point. Tiago does get this point because he didn't jump on. Pick a goal I'll go score. Jo- Isaac. Okay. That's your weird prediction. Oh, for a point, I should just say Rashford. <laughs> yeah, it's a right? free Might as well. Rashford. Yeah, but you said, yo, Purple Patch is over. So <laughs> all of a sudden, now you want to choose Rashford. Really? Well, no, because he's, like, he's all he's of a sudden, the most, right? He's the most likely to do so. Uh, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Good job, Rick. Nice. Uh, okay. Let's – never mind. I was going to make it really interesting, but no. That's – one's good. Uh, Perry, what's your score prediction? For nothing, Manchester United. Listen, let me tell you something about Newcastle. They can't fucking score. What is this nerd doing? What is this nerd doing, yo? Ricardo, Ricardo's losing his marbles. It's all the lotion. All the lotion. He's, just, he's drinking it. It's crazy. Uh, do you, you want to pick a goal scorer, Perry? Yeah, man. I can pick a whole bunch of goal scorers. So, all right. So, Rashford, two goals. Sancho. Sancho gets a goal. And then Anthony Martial off the bench gets a goal. <laughs> <laughs> yo, what a fucking night that would be listen give me, I'm, give me I'm one for that if you want a point give me one guy what to score for, just, if, if, for yeah, sure yeah just pick a guy if he scores in this game you get a point one point bruno Woo! fuck that was what i was gonna pick okay i got two nothing man you see i always got three one fuck you know i want to get creative and take the kid but i don't want to take sancho give me sancho so we got yeah, Rashford. you don't you don't you don't want to take Garnacho because he may not even see the pitch, right? I Depending know. on how the game goes. Did Sancho, play, did Sancho play today? Sancho, Sancho was started in the game and shit. You okay? Yo, buddy, I, yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying he started like okay. he played. I want to say Anthony. Uh, I, I I can't say a Brazilian. Sancho, boom. So Rashford, Bruno, 
Sancho. Okay. Uh, I think that's it, boys. Are you guys good? Ricardo, you packed? You ready to go? Doing it now. <laughs> it's just a bed. Cool. Uh, Perry, no, it's on, anything else it's on before the bed. wrap this puppy up? Yeah, man. I'm just really concerned about all the lotion that, that Rick has on the fucking table. <laughs> so like, subscribe, comment, and tell us if having that many creams in your 30s is normal. I have actually, yeah, a lot, but I don't you have You got to lather up after your shower, you know? <laughs> yeah, ha yeah. Ha hash hashy elbows. Perry doesn't know about that. Yeah, no. uh, Only we do. What? No, you don't have to <laughs> I agree, Rick. You know what? It's our, our people problems. Uh, Stumpers, like, subscribe, comment. Like I said, I think all that shit is below us. Uh, yeah. Engage with our shit on Instagram. Peace.